Hi everyone, welcome back to my home studio. This is day 30 of my quarantine distraction videos that I'm making for my students and for all of you to have a little distraction of what's going on in the world and to get our brains thinking a little bit more creatively and about working in clay. So today's video shows the throwing, trimming, attaching of a uh, pulled handle and decoration of a cup with the Mishima technique. Now, I previously did a video with Mishima. Um, it was a little egg video, and I um, got a lot of feedback from, uh, well, I got a little bit of feedback from a few people recommending that I try the wax method. Um, I have tried the wax method, and I wasn't getting the same effect that I wanted, so I'm using the same technique for this. This is the cup that I made. Okay, and the Mishima technique has left a very smooth surface, like you can't feel the texture. And that is the goal that I wanted out of this. I didn't want to feel the texture on this. Um, if I felt the texture, it would just be like carving it, bisque firing it, and then putting underglaze in the lines, which is fine. That's just not the effect I was going for. So I'll, I'll try the wax again another time if it's, uh, you know, going to work for whatever, uh, design I have in mind. But for this one, um, I'm doing it similar to the way I did the other one where I scrape it away. So I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe, like, um, at, drop me any questions in the comments below. And uh, I hope you all stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. The cup body is being thrown from a chuck. You can see the chuck is in use when I was trimming the eggs. A week or so ago, I just used the remainder clay that was the chuck and threw it into the cup form. And uh, if you want to see a video in more detail about throwing cup forms, I have one where I explain all the steps in my beginning wheel throwing playlist, which will be linked here. You can look at the, uh, the video card as it pops up. Now, I am refining this with a rib. I am going to be taking a piece of chamois right here. That's a little wet piece of chamois over the edge to really round it and smooth it. Trim away the excess at the bottom. And then I will set that aside to dry. Now it's fully leather hard. And when trimming the foot ring, remember that you always go straight down from the bottom. Don't go in from the side, straight down from the bottom. Cut the outside of the foot. And then when you go straight down from the bottom and you cut the inside of the foot, the two lines should be parallel. Never go in from the outside, remember, straight down from the bottom, that's gonna get you your two parallel lines. And then I'm just cleaning and refining the foot a little bit. And there I'm doing the interior edge of it. And I ribbed over uh, any of my marks. Now I'm ready to start making the handle and I form a little nub first and I've rolled like a little coil and you can see I've flattened it there so it's more like an oval now rather than a circle and I'm just kind of sculpting it with my fingers and then I'm going to be angling it upward a little bit off the belly of the cup and I'm scoring both and I'm just adding slip to the cup itself firmly pressing that on making sure that it has really good contact. I'm just kind of again sculpting the handle a little bit, making sure that it's pressed in there, taking a paintbrush, cleaning up any of the slip and the score marks that are visible there. Usually I let a handle like this sit for maybe 20 minutes before I start pulling it. Now when you are pulling you want to make sure that you have plenty of water so your fingers uh, easily slide. And notice that I'm kind of squeezing the top and the bottom and side to side. I change my hand position frequently so I can really sculpt it and control the pulling. Uh, you want to have a nice consistent pull. If you have thin dents, uh, it'll be noticeable. So I've pulled it long enough. Now I'm stretching the handle backward and I'm just, I scored a little bit there on the edge and then 
and pressing the two together. So as I press that, I'm kind of holding the handle in place there. And then I'm just tidying it up with a paintbrush and making sure that everything looks even and smooth. And this, by the way, is B-Mix without grog, so I can sponge this. Now I'm starting to add some surface design, and I just have a little tool that I'm indenting circles. So I'm just adding some kind of freehand design. I've got um, some circles that I'm denting, and now I'm just carving. And I'm using the Kemper um, triangle tip tool uh, to carve these lines. The nice thing about it, it carves it rather cleanly. And I do apologize for occasionally holding it down a little too low for the camera. I didn't realize I was holding it out of frame. And I'm just kind of freehanding this, trying to activate the space a little bit there. And now I've dusted it, I've cleaned it all off, and now I'm actually ready to start the underglaze so you can see what the design looks like carved. Now for the underglaze, I have some in a slip trailer right now, and I'm just applying it, kind of spreading it around. I want to get it in the grooves. So I'm trailing it on and then just kind of forcing it into the grooves a little bit there. And again, I decided not to use the wax on this. Um, I just uh, wanted to get it as a, slight, uh, a smoother texture than what I was able to get. Much to my disappointment, I accidentally forgot and left this uncovered overnight. So this uh, is considerably drier than I would want it to be. It's bone dry at the edge. So hopefully this will still scrape okay. I'm going to scrape and then lightly sponge off. Okay, so despite the fact that I completely forgot about this, left this uncovered, I was able to scrape it okay, um, and it looks like it survived just fine. So. so I'll just finish off by adding my signature, and then I'll get that in the kiln. So that's the technique of Mishma. Hope you enjoyed.